bum 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 bum. Tomatoes. Hello, and welcome to the video for how do I set up some basic free source control with Source Tree and Bitbucket. Let's start from the beginning. Source control, it's a way of keeping your source control or your project files somewhere so you have the ability to recover them in case of a disaster or an accident or you just want to try something out. This video is a basic, simple video on how to use two pieces, one piece of software and one web-based, web web-based, one cloud-based, whatever. It's a website that holds stuff. I'm not choosing them for any particular reason other than it's what I'm used to. And it's completely free for private repositories up to one gigabyte. They also have paid services if that's what you're looking for. And there's also other stuff. This is for the people who are like, I just lost everything. My world's about to end. My entire project is gone. With source control, you can avoid that. And that's what we want to do. To start off with, we want SourceTree. SourceTreeApp.com is the website. It's available for Windows and Macintosh OS X. I don't know why they call it Mac OS X anymore. I I'm pretty sure it's Mac OS now. Whatever. Anyways, it's for people with apples. And I've already downloaded it. We'll set it up here in a second. You can run the setup now, and you can go through it, and you can create your account. But you may run into an issue, and we want to avoid that. So bitbucket.org is going to be our next website. And this is the Atlassian, and they're the ones who handle the cloud service that we're going to be using. Now you can go ahead and create a new account, so get started. And it's going to ask you for your information, so an email address. I've already started this. What it's going to do is it's going to email you saying, hey, verify your email address. And once you've done that, it's going to have you set up the Bitbucket Cloud setup. So when you get to that point, after you've verified your email and you've logged in, it's going to say, hey, let's create your username for your Bitbucket Cloud. This is important because your username is where your repository shows up on the website and what you use for logging in. So we'll go with Matthew W, and we'll continue. And this is going to initialize our Bitbucket Cloud setup. At this point in time, we actually never need to come back here. We can do everything through the app. So let's go ahead and set up our app. So after we've downloaded it, we'll go ahead and run it. Now, depending on if you have Mac OS or Windows, you're going to have a different setup. But we're going to use the basics for both, so it doesn't really matter. Let's agree. Let's go ahead and do an Atlassian account. This is where you could sign up if you wanted to instead of through the website. But you may run into an issue. It's not going to automatically ask you to set up your Bitbucket cloud. It may do a st stupid, stupid CAPTCHA system. We avoided all that. So let's log in. And it's going to authenticate your account. And it's going to set you up for the basics. Now this is just for getting source tree up and running. Once this goes through, it's going to ask us what we want for our tools. You can hit next or we're not using Mercurial. We're just going to use Git. Those are just different ways of handling the files. Git's standardized. It's what we're going to use. You can always migrate to different software later, so it makes sense to use Git. Now it's going to install an embedded version, so a version just for source tree, so we don't have to worry about conflicting with other things. It may take a few minutes, as you can see here. Well, actually, this won't take a few minutes. It may take some time to download and install, but once it's done, Bitbucket, it, Bitbucket source tree itself is going to start up, and we're going to be able to start working. Now, there are two ways you're going to have to go about this. Hey, I haven't done anything yet, so let's create a new repository and then create a project. Or, hey, I already have a project. I need to move it over into source control. They're both both basically the same, but I'm going to show you. Actually, they're to be honest, they're both the same, but I'll show you both of them, so it really doesn't matter. So do we want to load our SSH key? No, we're not using SSH. If you're on Windows, you may start up a program called Pageant. It'll be in the bottom right-hand corner, or it'll be in your taskbar. I'm going to go and exit out. We go up to Tools, Options, and we're going to disable the automatic startup. We're not using that for our setup, so we don't need it. Now, at this point in time, we can start repositorying. We can start using repositories. We're going to work remotely. So we need to add our account for Bitbucket. We don't want OAuth because it's a pain in the butt. This is where your username comes in. You, not your email, but your username. Let it authenticate, and then now we have an authenticated account. You can have multiple accounts. I have, for example, GitHub for the public stuff that I do and Bitbucket for the private. No problem. Now that we have a repository, it's going to show us all... Uh, now we have an account, it's going to show us all of our repositories, and we have none. So let's create one. 
We can go to the website and create it, but I said we're not going to do that, so we can do it from Bitbucket. We'll go to create. Yes, we want to use a repository on a Bitbucket account. Where do we want it? Well, let's find somewhere to put it. Here's my project folder. Let's put it in here. Now, at this point in time, this is kind of where you might get a little confused or lost or lose some stuff. Let's not do that. It's going to put it in this folder, UE4, and it's going to name the, pro the repository UE4. We want it in a subfolder. We want it, like, for example, under test project. If we do this, now you'll notice it goes under UE4 test project with the name of test project. This program's a little weird because this right here, you'll notice as I start typing, this is the project name down here. So it's kind of important to note. You don't want it under UE4. The nice thing is you could always just do UE4 test project, and it will do this. It'll also create these folders if needed. But just make sure this is where you want it to be. You don't want it in the root of your actual project folder. We'll make this one private, and we'll create it. Once it creates a repository, we now have somewhere we can put files. So we're going to need some files to put in here. If we go to our folder, we look under test project, it's blank with the exception of this hidden folder called .git, which holds all of our data for source control, all of our revision information. It's a cache of all the information. Let's get some files in here. We'll boot up Unreal Engine. We'll go ahead and launch it, which I should have done a little bit ago, but I completely forgot because this is like the fourth time recording this video because dogs don't know how to stop barking. So we have this. We'll hit new project, and then we'll create a first-person project, and we'll put it somewhere. Well, we already created a folder called test project, so why don't we put it under there? So we'll do test project, we'll select that, and then here's our project name. Now, if you've worked with Unreal Engine 4, you'll know that it's going to go and create a new folder called my project inside of this folder. Now, that's fine. That's not an issue. Git doesn't care. Git just simply cares about the files. It doesn't care where they're at as long as they're under the main repository file structure. For our purposes, though, we want this to be clean. We want our files in this folder. So we would actually do, under UE4, we would do test project. And this is where we're going to run into a, a big issue. You can't create a new project in an existing folder. So Unreal Engine is going to complain. Now, if we try to do this the other way, we created the Unreal Engine project first, and then we try to create the repository, it's going to complain as well. So one of the two should come first, and I'd recommend the repository first because you can simply move files into there, and then it will work easily. If you try to do it the other way, there are methods of using like the command line to initialize a repository inside of an existing folder, but hopefully you can tell by my voice, I wouldn't recommend it. You can run into problems, especially if you're starting out. So let's just simply create it called Test Project 1. And it's going to end up side by side with our test project. So we have test project one and test project. Since we're creating a new project, we're just starting off. This won't be an issue because we don't have anything already, you know, it, we don't have a giant repository, a giant project already set up with a bunch of files. With that being done, all we need is to take our files out of our test project one, the project we just created, and put it into our test project folder where our repository is. We'll delete the old one, and now we have a simple folder, a project called test project. In the test project folder, you can see our files that we care about for Unreal Engine, and then our source control files. If we open this back up, well, you're not going to see any difference. Unreal Engine is going to open the project up in its new folder, and we're good to go. And once we launch it, it's actually going to show up inside of our launcher as well. We'll close that down for now. We'll go back to Bitbucket, and you know. You'll notice Bitbucket's now like, hey, you got some stuff in here. What do you want to do with it? And it's going to show you everything. So there's a couple things to note. Large files, so binary assets, generally shouldn't be used with Git. Yes, you can do it, and we're going to do it to actually to start off with here. But generally, you shouldn't. You should use something called the Large File System, or LFS, which I'll show you how to use at the end of this. But we also don't need temporary files. We don't need things like our intermediate files or our saved files. These are files that are temporary or transient, and they will be recreated every time we need them. And they're just going to take up space. So we're going to want to ignore them. And that's easy to do. We go to our repository settings. Here's our settings in here. Under advanced, we have an ignore file. Repository specific ignore list. 
Now you actually have a global ignore list you could set up inside of Bitbucket that's more advanced. We're just going to do a repository specific ignore list. We'll edit this. It's going to open up a file, Notepad, or I'm using Visual Code for example, but it's a file called .gitignore. I'm going to move this to the side. We'll go ahead and close this, and you're going to notice, oh look, it now found the .gitignore file. And if we go back into our project, hey, we have a .gitignore file. It added it for us. So got .git ignore is really simple for what our uses are. Let's go ahead and minimize this. And you basically tell it what you want to ignore. So like, for example, if we want to ignore all uasset files in the root, we could do that. And it's going to ignore all the .uasset files. But that's not what we want to do. We want to ignore folders. So let's look. We need our u project, so we'll keep that. We need our config folders. We'll keep that. We need our content folders because that's what our stuff is. Well, we don't need intermediate, so we can do intermediate slash and hit save. And what that's going to do is it's going to say, and I went back in here and updated, to ignore anything in the intermediate folder. Well, we don't need saved, so there we go. We'll do saved, and we'll save that out. We'll go back in here. Oh, look, now our saved is gone. And you can do that for everything. You can find more robust git ignore files on the internet for Unreal Engine 4. But for our example, that's all we need to ignore. We don't need our intermediate. We don't need our saved. We care about everything else. Now that that's set up, let me close down VS Code. We can say, okay, we're good. This is going to be our initial commit. This is going to be our initial set of files. Log history down here, this is where we have stuff we're doing. Log history is a history of all of your stuff that you've done. Right now we have nothing committed. File status is what's going on usually some changed files. So we're going to care about file status. We want to stage all of our files. We want every single file to be added. And this is where you're going to find that issue where I talked about in regard to the large files. Are you sure you want to add them? Well, right now, actually, we're not. We're going to use something called LFS, the large file system. That's intended to be used for large files, large binary files. And as you saw, it warned us. This one's super simple with Bitbucket. Go to repository, get LFS, initialize repository. Well, do you want to do that? Yeah, sure, why not? We'll start using it. Okay, well, that was simple. What files do you actually want to use as LFS files or binary files? We're going to do the uasset files. So uasset, we'll hit OK. Is this a file extension? If so, star.asset is OK. Yeah, sure, I was lazy. I just didn't type it in. And tell it to track the files. So what that's going to do is it's going to go in and any .uasset files, those are the binary files for Unreal Engine. Regardless of size, these are binary files that we shouldn't be storing in the actual uh, Git repository. We want it in the Git LFS repository. And that's it. That's all we need to do for that. So if we go in here and look, you can find all your things in here. You can push, you can pull, you can fetch, you can check out. Don't worry about those words. Don't worry about touching any of that stuff. What we cared about is we initialized it. And then we use the track untrack to do the U assets. Those are the big files that we're going to care about. Once this is done, now we can go ahead and stage all. And you'll notice, hey, no error this time. Depending on the amount of files, if you have a ton of files, Bitbucket may, Bitbucket, source tree may panic and go, oh my god, you have too many files. It'll give you an error. Say, cool. Hit OK. Hit stage all again. And keep going. If you're doing this for an initial push on a very large repository, you may have to stage a couple times till they all get in. It's just, it's one of those quirks that I've noticed. But for now, it's not. You notice it says plus. We're going to add these files. These are all the files we're going to add. And actually, at this point, we're almost done. What's our change log? Well, this is going to be our first commit. This is the first time we're going to do something. And then we're going to check the push changes immediately. This means when we hit our commit button, it's going to make it, make this as our main branch. We're going to just go. Here we go. We're done. And then we hit our commit button. And this is going to take some time, depending on your internet. And it's going to take all those files, and it's going to push them up to our Bitbucket Cloud account. And it's going to have them available for us to use later. So you notice right now, it's doing the LFS stuff. It's uploading them all using the Git LFS. This is one of those reasons why I recommend this setup, especially for newer people. Bitbucket handles all of the Bitbucket. I keep saying Bitbucket. Well, technically Bitbucket. Bitbucket handles the repository. It handles the Git setup on the cloud. It handles the LFS setup on their side. You can have a gigabyte of storage for LFS. And then SourceTree coupled with that handles all of this stuff you can see here. It handles the 
tracking of the files. It handles the uploading of the files. So it handles all of the complicated stuff for you. Now, once this is done uploading, it's going to go ahead and basically push this stuff, and it's going to do our first commit, and our files are going to be in our Bitbucket Cloud account. At that point in time, we have our first commit, and we have our base. We have our master. This is where we can start working off of. You could, for example, go to another computer, install source tree, connect to your account, grab this repository, and tell it to download. And it's going to be able to download all of these files and set it up exactly like this on your new computer. And you could do this anywhere you want without worry. You could, for example, lose a file on accident. And I'll show you how to handle file changes here shortly. Unfortunately, we just have to wait for this to upload. Um, in the future, for the next one, I, I need an initial commit here in order for me to show you how to do the changes. So I have to wait for this to finish. Um, once it's done, once it's done, it's almost done. It's only 80 megs. I wish I could get faster internet, but unfortunately I can't because I can't. I have 5 megabit upload, which is not the best in the world, as you can see here. Uh, but it's almost done, so that's a good thing. Um, let's see, anything else that's important with this? No, honestly, it's not. This is the basics of it. Uh, if we were to go to our website right here and look at our repositories, you can see, of course, after it asks me to log back in, and I learn how to spell my name properly, uh, we can find that we have our test project repository. And you can see that we have, this is our setup. We have nothing in here. Well, we have nothing in here because this wasn't finished yet. Once it's finished, and we go back in here, we can actually look, and here's our commits. We can see, here's our first commit, and you can see all of our files are in there if we were to go through and browse. Go back to Bitbucket. Now at the bottom, we want to go to our log history, and you can see, here we go. We have our master branch, our first commit. You can see all of our files that are in here, and you can see our words. We are good. Now we are safe. This is stored safely somewhere else, and we can come back to this later at any point in time and recover. Now let's say we have an existing project. So we're going to go into here. We're going to go into our test project. And let's say we have an existing project. Let's say this one, TPP Firelands, and we want to commit it to source. It's the same thing we did before. Initialize a repository copy your files over into that repository and commit it. I wouldn't recommend doing the init on an existing one. I wouldn't recommend creating a git repository inside of here. And the easiest way I found for this one, just rename temporarily the project to like with the one, create the new project repository just like how the old one was named, copy the files in, then get rid of the old one, and then you now have everything set up exactly like you did before, except it's in a committed repository. Now that we have a project running, I'm just going to cover quickly what we're going to do because, I mean, you should handle this. You, you, fine, you've got your initial repository, but now I want to know what to do next so I can be safe. So we're in here. Here's our stuff. Uh, we're going to create some new awesome actor. So we've got a new actor we created, and maybe we've created a new user interface widget, and we've created a material. So we've created a couple things at this point in time. Didn't I create the material? I guess it, oh, yeah, I did create it. It just took a while. So now we have a couple things. We've gone ahead. We've saved everything. We're done for the day. Just as a quick note, there is source control inside of Unreal Engine 4. You can actually connect to a Git repository, and you can do subversion per force. Not going to handle this here. This is just a simple way of doing things outside of the program, not through Unreal Engine 4. This is, again, a basic setup. But we're done for the day. When we start up Bitbucket again, it's going to go ahead and track any of your unchanged change it unchanged changes un it's going to check your untracked changes so right here we can see in our history we now have some uncommitted changes yeah we're done for the day we're happy with our stuff let's go ahead and make sure that someone else can access this or we have it saved in case our computer explodes in the middle of the night it's going to show us the things that are changed it's going to say, hey, these files have never... Actually, you know what? Let's go back into here so I can actually show you. Since I'm showing you the basics, I might as well show you the basics. Um, what I was trying to do is these question marks means these are untracked files. These are files that have never been on here before. But let's say we were actually in here, and let's find a um, texture. Here we go. I don't, Not a texture. I want a material. Uh, here we go. So let's say we were in here... And um, I don't know, we did comment and we put a new comment in here and we put a 
another node. Whatever, we did some changes to an existing material. So we'll go ahead and save this out. Of course, I had to pick the body material, which was huge in the first place. And we'll close that. Now that we're back in Bitbucket, you'll actually see here. This is a modified file. It's a file that existed originally, and we've changed it. Because this is a binary file, there's not really much we can do to it. We can't actually see the insides of it. If it was a text file, you could see it over here. But right now it's saying, hey, we've got a modified file and a couple new files. If you don't want anything in here, like let's say, for example, oops, we didn't mean to change this, you can right click and you can discard your changes. Let's say it is something you want to keep. Well, then you can add it individually, for example. So now you can see it's up here. Or if we want all of them, we'll just do stage all. Let's say nothing wrong, nothing's gone wrong. Hey, these are all good changes. Stage them all, go over here, put in uh, second commit, made the player more awesome, and then make sure push changes immediately to masters on and hit commit again. Now you don't have to do this. If you do, don't do that and you commit, you're going to run into this issue. You'll notice up here at the top it shows push one, it shows an up arrow. These files are not on the server. They are not pushed. They are still only on your machine. So that's something important to note. That's why I like making sure this is checked so it immediately pushes. In this case, we can hit push. I want to go to the master, which is my main branch. And it's going to go ahead and it's going to push it out. And it's going to save our files remotely. There are options such as having other people use your projects. There's options such as... Um, people working collaboratively, you can have create what's known as multiple branches. So you could say, hey, I want to see what happens if we do this change. You make a fork, you have a private branch. Oh, that worked really good. And then you merge it back to the main branch and then everybody else gets access to it. So those are all the features, advanced features of Git. We're not covering those. That's something for you to look into. This was just intended to show you how to set up an oh crap system in place using some free solutions. You'll notice here, we had those files to LFS and it worked simply. We go in here, here's our now our new version. We close this down, we can go back to our website. We can refresh. You'll notice we'll now have two commits. And you can go back and you can download the files and you're good to go. So that's it, that's the basics. This went a little bit longer than I wanted to, but I wanted to make sure I walked through it completely. Hopefully, you can understand how to download the software, set up an account, push stuff onto the website onto the Bitbucket cloud or another service if you want to use it, fine with me. GitHub, for example, works great, but GitHub doesn't have free private repositories. So that's something to keep in mind. And hopefully you can prevent any disasters in the future. And that's it.